to Creating with Mimi. Today I am bringing you guys a video about kitchen countertops, how to style. Mainly we're going to focus on the island. I'm going to show you guys several different concepts that you can do in your kitchen and the majority of these things are items that I already have. I will be mixing and matching as I go along and pretty much this is so organic because I'm actually designing this as I go along. I've got an idea of some things that I'm going to be using, but for the most part, I'm just gonna start putting things out and seeing what it looks like. This is what the kitchen island currently looks like after all of Christmas has been taken down. And I pretty much decided to just go and get a vase and I placed little topiary balls inside on top of the tray and it's just something so that it's not just plain. I will take away our things so that I can have a clean slate. How many of you guys are aware that light countertops or white countertops they really do hide a lot of dirt. Just like a white car does, I can go, I have a white car, I can go weeks and not wash the outside of my car. <laughs> so I love the white car for that fact alone. Let's try to name each one of these or vignettes or setups at the end of the setup, we'll see. You guys can leave comments uh, in the comment section as to what you think each vignette should be called, but I want to start off with the first one just being simplistic um, and very little decor, keeping it neutral. I think I'm going to start off with this white. That's really pretty. You guys have seen this before. We did this for fall in the entry hall. As you can see, I still have some of the green tape. I like to keep things pretty elevated. Just to give you reference, this is seven by a little bit over four feet in terms of the diameter of the island. So these things are already pretty tall, but we're gonna keep it really simplistic. I decided to go with these green stems to drop it in. on top of it but either way so this is something that I picked up literally at um, Hobby Lobby maybe a few years ago and all it is is a, a pedal stool bowl so, and you can use it several ways you can use it this way place your candle inside of it you can flip it over place your candle this way I have actually two of these today we're going to use it as a candle I've got a triangle going, triangle, and I've got some height, simplistic vessel bowl with a little bit of texture because of the way it has the handles on the side. It's a little bit more interesting. And I'm gonna add one more. So this by itself, it goes hard, and it's, it's just as elegant by itself, but if you wanted to add a little bit more color, 
actually going to add one more floral. Now, I always purchase floral with wire so that I can bend it. I don't like to cut it in the event that I have a super tall vase that I want to utilize. Normally three of these would be enough, but I almost think I need a little bit more. And that's probably because this is so sparse. My vote for this one is, I would probably call her Sarah. So simplistic but it's interesting she's quite interesting with the green we've got a little color going with uh, some of the seeds in the orchid we're gonna call her Sarah leave a comment for all of those who are voting for Sarah A couple of points. I start off either with something going down the complete center and I'm going to show you guys one of those setups or I have something where it's just focused in one corner and that's because of the way that my island is set up. It is vertical into the kitchen. Most islands are horizontal. My kitchen is not that way so it's vertical. Having said that, and that's one of the things that I will be taking care of, I want horizontal islands. And the difference is things that are vertical, they tend to, if you're looking head on, you're looking into like an alley. And anything that's horizontal, it expands your space left to right. So I'm starting off this next one with this gorgeous glass top. And what makes it unique, this is from Z Gallery. I've had it for a while, so I don't know if they still sell them. But what makes it unique is the top, the shape of it. So I will start it off with this. And I will add this one here and it doesn't matter which one how you situate it left left to right just for me I guess because I'm right-handed I like the height on the right hand side of it these again the uh, shape of this top is what makes this unique you can choose and pick up these things at like home goods target but always when you find something that you like and it has a unique shape to it, pick it up and get it. Regardless of if you do not know what you're going to use it for, if you like the shape, get it. And that's pretty much what I did with this. Now I'm going to think about what I want to place inside of it. Normally, since I'm working with glass for my centerpiece, I'll bring this back. I've had this for some time. This ginger jar is gorgeous, it's glass, you can see through it. This was definitely from Hobby Lobby. They do not have them all the time. Sometimes you can catch them online. I place them in several clients' homes. When I do see them, I will pick up two or three. This thing is very unique and it has legs to it. I love it. It's, abs it's just gorgeous. So since I am working with glass and glass is pretty much going to be our uh, center, our focal point for design. I'm gonna bring one more piece. What am I going to do to break up all of the glass and add a little bit more interest to the island? It's the other items that I will place around inside of these two containers. One second. Let's remove that and 
I will start off with just some visual interest and I think I will pop that in there like so. So I love that. You can either put something like um, something that gives you visual interest like this or you can put a candle, anything inside of here that's pleasing to your eye. I use these a lot and all they are are just balls. Some of them are covered in feathers, different colors. show you guys another cute trick. It is winter, so I decided to either add and the reason why I'm switching vases again is because of the height. This is much lower than this and this just sinks a little bit better. This one, I'm gonna add this. It's just a little stand. You guys, you pick these things up from Home Goods. There's several of them, but I want to finish this off, and it just looks like a vase. That's gorgeous. Let's come up with a name for this one. Maybe um, Cindy, Karen. She is simplistic. However, she's adding some warmth. We have texture, warmth, more warmth, 
color, but it's just simple. So most of the island is still open and you can utilize, it's completely functional. just to order that. In my tea, I add creamer or coffee creamer. This is the Almond Joy Delight. It is so good, it's hard to find. So when I do get it, I purchase five or six of them at a time. And it tastes so good to have cream in your tea. This was one of my hauls that was from um, Hobby Lobby. This thing, it's on sale right now for I think 50% off. It's so gorgeous. I have several of these on the wall, but what I like about this one is it has like a, it's, it's a twist or a braid of the white going around the perimeter, and it just adds a different touch, that contrast between the, it's not white, it's ivory, and the natural tone, to me, it's just gorgeous. So I'm gonna sit that one here, and the other thing, I'm gonna dress it today on the island, naturally, or you guys, there are hooks on the back, you can actually hang this one on a wall. I don't wanna hang mine, I'm gonna use it for decor. What I love about this, today I'm just going to put the balls inside of it, but you can actually use this as a charcuterie board. So we've got the white island, that's our surface, and it's got a, it's, it's, it's quartz, but it's Calcutta, and it has some of this wheat color going through, so that makes it very interesting as well. So now I'm going to add some elements to it and give it a contrast. Isn't this thing gorgeous? It's, it's just gorgeous. They, they have a smaller, they have two different sizes. Um, there's a smaller one than this. I think this was the largest. And with the smaller one, it was a different pattern around the perimeter. And I think it made it look a little bit too southwestern for me. This is very transitional. It could either be Farmhouse 2.0 style, which is a little mix between modern and traditional. Since we're working with a lot of black, I decided to purchase this, which is just gorgeous. And obviously, I like the difference between the two sizes and the height. I think I'm going to bring the other charger back. I am. serving appetizers, it can spin around. That is pretty unique. Place that in there.
is simply just gorgeous in the kitchen to have an all white kitchen as I do and well it's not all white but it's majority white I have the black elements of bringing in the accent wall and then there's black in the print on the opposite side of the room the wheat color and the gold basket picks up on the gold light fixture this is such a lovely display and also you can take these things out and use this as a charcuterie board and have your fruits, vegetables, your cold cuts. Now I would put some wax paper on the bottom of it before I just start putting food out. I want to give this a full design or decor element. So I'm going to work with the other side and I'm going to place an additional board on the other side. It's white but I'm bringing in some of the gold elements to tie in what I'm doing on the opposite side. And I'll place that there. I think that's just gorgeous already, but I wanna add a little bit. You guys know me, I, I do a little bit more, but I'm loving this black. <clears throat> I haven't decided what I'm going to lead out from um, now to spring, but I might just leave this black out because it's giving, it's giving me life right now. All right, let's bring in some more elements. We're just gonna keep right along with this black. That is, whew, I love that. <laughs> I am gonna put some type of floral inside of this, but this is a simple black vase. These are, I wanna say 100 bucks at Pottery Barn. I picked this one up for like 20, nine bucks at home goods and I believe I showed you guys those in the home goods video and it's just it's imperfect so it has the white or that could have just been from wear and tear I'm not really sure I'm definitely going to line it up with the center focal point so now I'm creating a straight line of sight I've got black on this side I will be bringing black over here adding in a few more elements of the white now these are these are old so i can't tell you where i got them from but they're the simple little bead they're not that fancy and i might leave it on i may not depending on what it looks like when i step back i do love that coat of contrast i'm probably going to bring these a little bit closer instead of side by side I'll bring them closer and bring and place one a little bit in front of the other. So this one, I'll just put over the ears like so. What I love about these is it has the wheat tassel that ties in with the wheat from the basket. You can either place them on top, the ears on top, but I want to keep things looking organic and natural, continuing on with this, I believe. Now, if you definitely have to have some green, I would do something a little bit smaller, similar to this. Dying to have some green. I don't necessarily need to have green. I think the green is a bit much. The green is too bright and it breaks up the cohesiveness of all of the colors and textures. The colors are still earth tone colors. The black, the beige, the white, the brown and um, the wheat color with the basket. So the green to me, it just throws it off. So I'm gonna find something, because I do want a floral inside of here, but I wanna find something that works a little bit better and complement what we're doing over here. Okay, I think I found the perfect complement. I used this pompous grass last fall and I think it's going to work out perfect in here.
This is so full for the kitchen. I think I'm going to switch up the sizes. So essentially, I've created, I want to say, two focal points in one. But if you're looking to walk into your kitchen and really have a wow factor, then use both of them. Let's say you're entertaining and it's simply just gorgeous. It gives me that wow factor that I'm absolutely looking for. Or if I have a client that's asking me for a wow factor, this island setup, it is gorgeous. And it's still functional where you can place drinks and food and different things around. One of you guys gave me a tip for the pompous grass so that it doesn't shed. And that is to spray it with um, hairspray. So I did that and it does work to spray it with hairspray. It absolutely works and you won't see the things falling off. Absolutely. I love this one. Now, I don't have candles. You can place the small candle holder here if you choose to. That is simply gorgeous. I turned it around because when I walk in here, I want to see the front of that setup. I'm so elated. I am so excited about this. This might be my final go-to for the season to carry me through fall or to carry me through winter. vases I I like the contrast and you guys don't know where I'm going with this but what I'm going to do is elevate this just a little bit you can use anything for elevation and this what I'm using here is that's so cute I usually put cinnamon rolls or something like that inside and sit that on top that is really, really cute. But today, I'm gonna to use it to elevate this just a little bit more. You guys, can you see the difference between the two when you elevate something 
or when you leave something just standard sitting on top of the surface by itself to elevate it it's almost like giving it a finished look for this one i'm just going to place the floral inside of the vase like so Next, I want to add some candle holders to continue with this theme of bringing in the natural earth tones and more of the tan color with the taupe. And I believe I'll place that like so. A couple of candles. Let's switch it. Keep the elevation going. To create some contrast, we'll add this in. I think that's really, really cute. I guess I don't have a lighter almost anymore. Perfect. Let me ask you guys, what do you do to decompose when you've had a day that seems like <laughs> it's been the day from hell, but not really the day from hell, but sometimes these days can really try you. Literally, right now, just creating and putting this small little bit arrangement together, as small as it is and as small as it seems, placing that arrangement together is relaxing me. It just takes me from the chaoticness of the world into my own utopia. And we always talk about create your own utopia and create the life that you love. All right, I'm gonna show you guys, I think this might be the last final one, or maybe two more looks because I really love using the black. Okay, this next one I'm gonna bring in. <laughs> this is so weird because I thought that this was a table runner because I want to create a white table runner going through, but it is not, but I do like that. So we're gonna work with the black and I will bring this back in. 
The reason why I wanted a white runner is because it creates that contrast even more and it breaks up and it gives you a definite but right now I can't break it up because I'm not gonna take the time and go look in storage for the white table runner. I'm gonna work with what I have already out and this is going to be it. So I do like the black against all of the white. Then we have the black accent wall, but I do like to see some floral. So I'm gonna add floral to this. These are just so gorgeous. I'm just gonna sit it in there like so. See how tall. Normally, I do add the tape. Why I'm not doing that today, I don't know, but I'm not going to add it. I'm going to see how well I can make these stand up, and then I'll add some paper in the bottom of it. But first, I want to get quite a few inside. To help keep your florals in place, this is gorgeous. Stand that back up. A little bit more paper. And now we can just continue to fill up. Put this that way. I guess one of the questions would be, where do I store all this floral? It's pretty simple. I put mostly everything, just like the Christmas video, into um, containers, and it's so easy. You can pick these containers up from like Home Depot. It is super, super easy. They, they're stackable. I love how that's coming together. A few more in the back. Bend it over just a little bit. Back so they look a little bit more natural. Put this one in the opposite way, so from behind, it looks really good. I think that's perfect. Now that I've placed that in, I wanna separate this a little bit more just to add more balance. I don't think I need this last one. I will add one more just to give it a little bit more texture and contrast. That's just, now that's scrumptious. That's gorgeous. And so I'm adding this silver candle holder because I'm just creating that contrast, but it works in the space because of all of the other metal elements, i.e. even though it's gold up top and I've got the gold hardware on the cabinets, I still have the chrome, the refrigerator, the stove from behind. And so mixing these elements, that is just divine. And I'll place a little candle on top. That's very, very nice. I didn't use a smaller candle and I'll show you guys the difference. I didn't use a smaller, a smaller candle because look at the difference when you place a smaller candle on top of such of a large base and bottom, it looks awkward and as though it's an afterthought. I'm using something larger so that it's just as beefy as what's going on with this candle size. I'm matching elements in terms of height from the left to the right side, your left, my right, and what we have going on with the floral. This looks beautiful. There's tons of space remaining on the island and 
This is absolutely gorgeous. Very, very simplistic. I always like a candle. I'll probably add one more. And this truly just completes that whole vignette. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. I've added, in terms of the series where we talk about how to style your island or your cocktail table, I've created the three things that we talk about. I've created height, texture, and style in almost everything that I'm using on this space. But as long as you have those three elements in place for decorating your island or your countertop, you will be fine. This last look that I will create is called the triple threat. I usually create it on a dining room table, but you can do this on your island. You can even create it in a rectangular dining room table or a circular table. A circular table would be so dynamic if you placed all three of these and maybe elevated something in uh, the center. But. For this purpose, we're going to just create an island focal point, and I could do this all day. This is gonna be the last one <laughs> because the video would be too long, and you guys have things to do, and I have other things to do as well. So let's get started. For this purpose, I'm gonna take this vase, which it is so gorgeous. It's glass, it has tons of texture, it's got a small beaded-like texture and then it's fluted texture down below. The shape of it is different on top. There's a different shape down below and it is just gorgeous. So I will add three of these throughout the island and I don't have any felt under this. These vases are at your local home goods. So if you want to get something similar to this or this, go run, not walk. And I love them because this color and the shape, it, this is timeless. This is, you can keep this forever. It is not too trendy, even though it has a metallic type finish. To me, it's just enough. It will work for any decor. Even if you're form house and you sit this on a plain wood table, it would elevate the table because it is a complete contrast to what's going on in the table. And that design is what we call transitional. So let's get started. I purchased these baby breaths uh, and they're faux from Hobby Lobby. And I did do a video or a video is coming up for what Hobby Lobby has for the spring and let's just see height wise. So I'm gonna lower these, no I'm not, I'm gonna keep them like that. And I just love that. I'm going to utilize this height for most of them. So I'm only gonna take probably about three inches off of the bottom and see if I like that a little bit better. Uh, I do and I don't because of what's coming in the other. I'm gonna add this at the bottom to give it just a little bit more height. Perfect. I think that looks much better. And it's not as floppy. That was just simple paper that I've added in here. I'll do a little bit more. So what I do in the center, you can either elect to Add the same floral in all three. And that, it looks pretty dramatic. I don't have enough because it needs to be 
all three of them should be full. And since I don't have enough for, <coughs> you need to probably place about 15 of these in each vase. And that would be a look. I'm going to fill it with this one. You can either use that one or I've decided, I'm not sure which one I want to use. Let's see what this looks like. You guys get to vote as well. You either like the cherry blossom or, I'm not sure what this is called, but it's got like rose petals. And that might work because of the color. So I know what the cherry blossoms look like. Let me step out and see what that looks like. I really like the cherry blossom with it. And you can play with it to each his own, right? Probably something about the color of the baby's breath against the color of the cherry blossom. And then I wanna make this on the front a little bit smaller so that it comes down even more. And you guys, you see that what I'm creating is layers of that baby breath. Layer number one, two, and then three. Don't you guys just love the wire? for the, the stem on the floral, you can just make it any size that you want and you're, you're not limited. I'm loving how that's coming together. Let's do one in the center here. So each time you add something, it just gives it a fuller look. One more here. Bend that forward a little bit. And let's see about adding more of these. You can store this paper because I usually keep this paper stored inside of all of the vases that are around the house. I've got this large ginger jar just on the other side of the countertop. And I will keep paper inside of there. Any place that I can think of for storage, I will definitely use. That looks more natural. Let's do the other side. Keep in mind that every single arrangement or vignette that you create, it doesn't need to have a definite contrast, but this is what I would call a subtle contrast because there is contrast from the, I'm not gonna say contrast, I would probably use the word uh, compliment. This vase complements what's going on in the countertop because we do have silver in the countertop. This is so subtle. The brown is another compliment in the actual stem on that side. And then the baby breasts that you see coming through are just organic, white, earthy, and so natural that this is the most simplistic but elegant floral arrangement design that you guys could do. It's really elegant and very simplistic and easy to do. You can go over to your local Michaels or your Hobby Lobby and pick up some baby breasts. Usually Hobby Lobby has a sale on their floral. I think right now or when this, hopefully, it really doesn't matter, like every other week, I think they have a sale on floral where it's 40 to 50% off. And a couple of times a year, it might be 60% off. At those points is when I would just go and purchase floral that I love, that looks really good to me. That way you always have it on hand. And this is so cost efficiently. So let's say I'm using probably five, 10, maybe 15 of these baby breaths. And if you're purchasing these for $3 
are $2 a stem, you actually have created three floral arrangements that's quite dynamic for 45, 50 bucks with tax. I wish I had more of these. I'll be totally honest. I would like to have maybe five more of the baby breaths, but just looking at it this way, it's still stunning and very elegant to walk into a space and to see this on your island. This is to me a very simple way to keep things fresh. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. I'm not sure <laughs> which one is my favorite. This is a top of the list because it's just simplistic. It's elegant. I have enough color where I'm not bored. I can even throw in another, let's say I wanted to place a yellow Inside, I can do that. If I wanted to make it look more fall, I'll show you guys that right quick just by adding a fall color. And these are on the other side of the room because I've had them out. But just adding a little bit of a fall color. That's gorgeous. It totally transformed. And you're just stuffing that in there. Let's add a little bit more to here, like so. So I need to raise this up just a little bit. I hope you guys can see this on camera by changing some of the positioning of a floral just the height a little bit, spreading that floral arrangement out, it gives it a different dimension and look. Just adding a few different elements, it changes it. And that's how you're able to reuse some of your floral. If you like this video, hit that like button or subscribe. You will be notified each time there is a new upload. Until next time, make every day a great day.